is it broadcasted on yes so our next speaker is clovis we got interrupted earlier but we want to resume from um, what we discussed earlier clovis is a mental health advocate and a multiple business owner He's an artist and an introvert, and uh, he started his journey by uh, expressing his thoughts and feelings through art and not being accepted by his parents. And then later on, they, they uh, ended up supporting him in his journey. So Clovis, I wanna take it from here and ask you to tell us, how would you encourage men to have a greater awareness of their mental well-being? What are some of the routines, some of the proactive steps, or some of the tips and strategies that you'd like to share for all of our listeners? Please. All right, thank you, Julia, and uh, thank you for everybody listening. So what I would do, uh, like I looked back to my history and uh, earlier I was gonna say, tell you how I really started advocating for mental health. And that was after one of my business partner died and I went through like a, almost two years of depression. And then uh, I got help from professionals and other people who really helped me to just keep things going on. And then after I started corporate up life and uh, go my gear and then I continue with that uh, advocacy like up to now. So uh, what I will tell people to, is for you to be aware of your mental health is just to, to know who you are. All right, like who you are as a person and uh, to be aware of the situations. So you, because sometimes you go through things and uh, you may turn a blind eye and uh, not realizing that those things are really like, a, you know, something they're really impacting you in a negative way uh, because it's kind of uh, like this, uh, you know, people come from different backgrounds, people come from different like uh, setup and different uh, upbringing. Sometimes they go through so many stuff and then they think that is no more. And to the point that when they, they realize afterwards that those things are not supposed to be no more and then it becomes like the whole shit. So knowing uh, who you are and your, the situation that you're in will help you so much to uh, be aware of your mental health uh, status. Okay, beautiful. So, so what are some of the, the routines or habits or, or, or strategies that you have built into your own life to maintain mental wellness? Thank you so much. Uh, so the strategies that I have built, normally it's uh, through the, the second point that I can say is, uh, you know, just embrace discipline and uh, uh, self-discipline and commitment. So I really started doing journaling. And uh, I started planning out my days uh, and doing uh, things based on priorities. And I just, you know, waking up and just going throughout the day without anything planned. So I would say you don't have to plan everything like from the start, but you just have to have uh, one of three things that you can just say, okay, this is for this day and I have to finish the day after I've done this. And that will help you to uh, have that self-discipline and then help you uh, stick to it. If you cannot do it yourself, then you're gonna have an accountability partner or somebody who's gonna just help you along the way just to, for you to, to commit to that. And that can really uh, be tough in the beginning, uh, but well, how, how you get used to it, it will form a habit and that will help you to develop that discipline and really reflect on that. In the long run, you may you may thank yourself later, and also maybe now start planning bigger things. But you still have to start with one thing, just one thing that you can do throughout the day, and uh, don't go to bed or don't sleep unless you finish that thing. Then you can add another one. Then you can add another one, and then you're gonna have to repeat day after day, month after month, uh, year after year, and yeah, it's gonna be pretty much like that. So. Beautiful. The, yeah. So I know um, Gemma touched on having a mission and you touched on having goals. So I guess those are bigger things that are overall contributors to our mental well-being and, and joy and happiness in life in general. But can so, you tell me a little bit more about 
and you know the stress that comes with that so for example i find that if i if i set some goals or even little ones let's say if i if i have a to-do list for today and i look at it at the end of the day and i didn't do the three things that i wanted to do maybe i did two out of the three i did five other ones but i didn't do the one that i wanted to do like it stresses me out i feel like i didn't accomplish what i wanted to accomplish and then that in in, in a way it brings out stress and you know, guilt and a whole bunch of other things that can spiral into potentially a mental, not necessarily issue, but a, a day when I feel down, right? So, so what, what are some of the strategies you have dealing with stress or dealing with when you don't meet your deadlines or goals? What, what, what would you recommend then? So that's a, a good question, uh, really. Like, you know, setting, setting goals and uh, trying to commit to them, sometimes it may, it may be like a, a you know, a hard thing to start because always like, it's always hard to embrace change. Uh, however, you have to embrace it anyway. And then also sometimes we tend to follow stuff that have been dictated to us. So like if somebody set the rules, then we might follow them. But if ourselves set the rules for ourselves, sometimes we may be like, okay, yeah, we tend to be like, uh, take it easy for ourselves and try not to commit to it. And, uh, but uh, when we do that, uh, in the same way that you feel like stressed, it's somehow, uh, that's a good thing because if you feel stressed about something uh, or you feel that self guilt, it's a good thing because it will, it will mean that you're really taking it seriously. And uh, once you take it seriously, what I can recommend to you is not to be hard on yourself and uh, just go with a slow pace. That's why I recommend you start with one thing and then uh, add another one, how you need to track your progress and then add another thing like along the way down the road. So self uh, guilt, uh, stress and all that that come through all that. Some people cannot even sleep. And I remember I, I spent like a, uh, months without, with no sleep and uh, that was really painful for me and I could not tell anybody and it was hard. And however, I didn't have anybody to help me. So I had to go through it all alone. And uh, it was a kind of situation where I, I used to live alone. And uh, if I wanted to buy something, I need to send somebody to go buy it. But I, I just stay at home like <laughs> in the dark, I turn off all of the lights. And I just stay there, not even thinking about anything, but just be by myself. And uh, that alone was so hard. And until after when I got healed from there, I just realized that sometimes you need support. That's why you need people around you, uh, people that love you, as uh, Jim must say, and partners who can you can, can you uh, can hold you accountable for for some things like accountability partners. So this is it's like a journey that you don't have to do it on your own. So you have to have people around you and you wish who will share the goals with you or will help you get to where you want to go. So don't be hard on yourself and get help. Thank you so much. I can right away think of some people that maybe don't have anybody or don't have a support network or maybe people in their support network are the ones who are disapproving of them, letting them down or maybe have higher expectations. For example, if you're a teenager you know, and your parents and your family expects you, let's say, to, to perform either in sports or academically and you fail or, and you've got nobody to talk to. And let's say you know, you're being bullied in school and whatever. Where can they find support? Like, how do people get courage to reach out to people they don't know and start building that healthy network of people? Like, what would you recommend? Uh, so what I would recommend, thank you so much for the question. So support as, as you said, it's not always available for anybody. So sometimes it's kind of like a privilege. So especially coming from somebody like an introvert like me, I cannot just go and tell people about my stuff. So it was really hard for me to do that. So how did I get support? I joined forums. So you just have to go and join forums anonymously online and share about this stuff. There are so many people who are there and sharing. Nowadays, uh, there are Twitter spaces where you can join. You don't have to, to, to join like yourself. You can create a, a different account and then join and listen. 
there are so many spaces online because uh, growing up, what we have now, uh, it was not around. So right now there's so many ways to get access to a lot of stuff and, and also help in this case. So especially online, which is a broader, uh, you know, platform. So you can get from any platform, Facebook, Instagram, and any other platform. But uh, I can advise first to start with forums. You can just have to Google uh, your keywords, which is maybe a trauma you're experiencing, let's say depression uh, forum, and then you're gonna find a lot of forums. So, and then, okay, mental health forums. You find some on Quora, you find some on uh, Reddit, you find others forums on like on Twitter, as I said, you just put the hashtags and uh, also on Instagram, you can find a lot of people. And also, yeah, you can find so many uh, hosts who have podcasts and can talk about it. But uh, if you still like uh, don't want to show your face or you like feel so guilt about that, I'll advise you just start anonymously and then just grow from there to build your confidence because confidence is something that you have to build self-confidence self-love and uh, all that it's going to help you to evolve so that's what i can say about it just uh start by taking a decision to share first and then uh find uh so many forums that you can do that's the online part and if you let's say you don't have internet or you live in a in a place where it's really hard to access in it, maybe once a, once a week, once a month, then uh, I would just advise to find a, a local community of people who are doing that. Uh, growing up as an introvert, I, I could not, like it was easy for me to make friends, but I could not pretend them because like we could not talk, we don't have conversation. And uh, it's, it's really hard, like weird. I just, okay, we just met, but I don't have anything to discuss with you. I just, maybe I can paint you. Maybe I can do something. <laughs> just, I don't have anything to discuss with you. So it was really hard for me to keep up with conversation, which is something that has progressed. Like for now, I can even talk on Summit. And uh, it was really hard for me to do that. So what I did was I joined uh, clubs of uh, karate uh, martial arts so that was my way of for me to 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 just express myself and then throughout the, those programs it helped me stay out of the streets and uh, I joined my dancing clubs and joined uh, like there's so many stuff that you can do to release your tension so and to help people around you because uh, community is something that you need when you're experiencing these things so it can be community where you can talk or a community where you can just do a certain activity, like a dance, like, a, you know, just run, jogging, hiking, and just to release your tension. And maybe along the way, you'll find ways to interact with people and express yourself. That is amazing advice, yes. Any social media has support groups, just Google, Google the groups or Google the hashtags, that's a great idea. Thank you so much, Clovis. Can you tell our audience how to find you, how to get a hold of you, where they can follow you on social media? And then we'll wrap up. Sure, thank you. Uh, it's uh, Clovis AP, so C L O V I S space AP on all social media platforms. And uh, also, you can find uh, uh, different websites on, uh, you know, coppertoplife.com, gomergear.com, guygivengift1.com. But uh, the whole set of links you can just type beacons that ai forward slash clovis ap so just reach out to me if you need help with anything uh, especially when it comes to uh, having a worthy conversation deep conversation and also if you need help with your business uh, we can just have a talk and see how we can help thank you so much clovis Thank you, thank you, thank you. This will be a podcast episode, obviously, because it doesn't have any video. All right, thank Clovis, you. we will uh, be in touch.